Good evening and welcome to State of Business, our television's prime term business news bulletin. I'm Madhusha Palakumar. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Public consultation on proposed mechanism to accredit electricians to be implemented from October. Rossi Sena Naika assumes duties as first female mayor of Colombo. Now the stories in detail. The Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka today held the second phase of the public consultation on the proposed mechanism for establishing an accepted professional status for electricians in the country through accrediting their qualifications and experience. The PUCSL plans to recommend the finalized licensing framework to the government by May 2018, while the new mechanism is expected to be implemented from October 2018. Experts, electricians, consumer associations, investors and industrialists presented their comments, views and proposals with regard to the licensing of the framework for electricians. With the introduction of this mechanism, all electricians will be issued a temporary license valid for three years to continue their work. Electricians with qualifications will be eligible to obtain a permanent license from the Construction Industry Development Authority. As the second step, the Commission and the other organizations thought that standardization of domestic electric installations are required to ensure a safer environment uh, for the people who are using electricity. And uh, because of that, we thought uh, licensing of electricians is a very important step towards achieving the safer environment. The people who already have uh, NVQ qualification can straight away get the license by getting themselves evaluated from the panels and the license will be issued by CETA. Those who do not have NVQ qualifications, the process recommended was to issue a temporary license for three years immediately. And within those three years, either electricians can get the NVQ qualifications and get the license, or they are evaluated on prior uh, recognition, prior learning. That is based on your experience. They are evaluated and issued the license. Rosi Sena Naika assumed duties as the first female mayor of Colombo at the Colombo Municipal Council today. Rosi Sena Naika took office following a ceremony at the Colombo Municipal Council this morning, which was attended by Minister Gayantha Karunathilaka and MP Ravi Karuna Naika, among other guests. She was sworn in as the new mayor of Colombo before United National Party leader Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe on Monday. Sena Naika's United National Party won 60 of the 119 seats of the CMC at the local government elections, winning an outright majority in the council. Minister of Finance and Mass Media Mangala Samaravira stated that at present the government is mainly focusing its attention on creating a conducive environment for foreign investment and to further expand the existing investment opportunities. Minister Samaravira made the statement at a reinvestment networking event which was organized at the Board of Investment recently. The focus of this government since coming to power has been to improve the investment climate to encourage further expansion of the existing investments and attract new investors. In recent past, Sri Lanka has shown tendencies of an inward-oriented economy dominated by non-tradable sectors, as a result of which exports have, now, have declined and investments in the tradable sector were less promising. However, we have now set in motion reforms that will change this economic dynamic towards more export orientations. As a part of this economic reform agenda, a number of measures are being implemented to facilitate private investments. These reforms include the elimination of para-tariffs. We already have done so, 1,200 this year, and we hope to eliminate all 3,000 on para-tariffs by 2020. Promotion of identified sectors for investment. The establishment of new export processing investment zones. The digitalization of, private, public, of public services, and of course, the liberalization of the shipping sector, which we hope to do very soon. 
Speaking further, Minister Samaravira stated the government is in the process of entering into new strategic trade agreements with a significant focus on investment. The minister also noted that the New England Revenue Act that will be effective from the first of next month will provide many incentives for investors. Along with the EU GSP Plus uh, facilities, Sri Lanka will have duty-free market access to India, China, Pakistan, Singapore, and of course Europe. As the FTAs come into effect, investors will have opportunities to link into regional and global value chains with Sri Lanka as a fulcrum of activity. Of equal or more importance to market access is the issue of creating investor confidence. Sri Lanka's track record in policy stability has not been perfect, but our resolve to consolidate a set of rules-based, predictable and consistent policy framework remains pivotal. With the introduction of the Inland Revenue Act, which will come into effect in a few weeks' time from the 1st of April, the government has rationalized the incentive schemes provided to in investors. This creates a level playing field compared to previous ad hoc in investment incentives that did not always have an objective basis and in most cases it was left to the whims and fancies of the minister in charge. Let's take a look at more news after this short break. Welcome back. Issuing the National Consumer Price Index for the month of February 2018, Director General of the Census and Statistics Department, Dr. Amara Satrasinka stated that the year-on-year -year inflation based on NCPI has declined to 3.2% from 5.4% in January 2018. Inflation of 3.2% reported for February 2018 is the lowest inflation reported since April 2016. The reported inflation for the month of February 2018 was mainly due to comparatively higher price levels that prevailed in February 2017 and the decline in food prices in February 2018. Contributions to inflation in February 2018 from the food group and the non-food group are 1.6% and 1.5% respectively, whilst contributions of these two groups to the inflation in February 2017 were 4.5% and 3.8% respectively, resulting in a headline inflation of 8.2%. When compared to the month-on-month -month changes, NCPI in February 2018 has decreased to 123.7 from 125.8 reported in January 2018. This shows a decrease of 2.1 index points or 1.7 percentage points in February 2018 as compared to January 2018. This month-on-month -month change was due to the decrease of the expenditure value of food items by 1.96% and the increase of non-food items by 0.35%. The expenditure value of the communication group remained unchanged during this month. National Water Supply and Drainage Board, under the guidance of the Ministry of Water Supply and Drainage, celebrated the World Water Day 2018 at the BMICH in Colombo today. The World Water Day, which falls on the 22nd of March every year, is celebrated to focus the importance of water and the need to preserve it. This year, the World Water Day is celebrated under the theme Nature for Water, which focuses on nature-based solutions for water-oriented challenges in this era. Meanwhile, addressing the event, Minister of City Planning and Water Supply, Ralph Hakim, emphasized the important areas that need to be taken into consideration by the Ministry when supplying water to consumers. Our Ministry, which is in charge of water, as well as sanitation and sewage, has got to look at a variety of issues, particularly as a monopoly. We have a corresponding duty. A state sector institution, the National Water Supply and Drainage Board, happens to be a commercial entity with, a, with an absolute monopoly in the, in the area of distributing purified drinking water to the entire population in this country. So it's time for us to look at our corresponding duties towards our consumers. Of course, as an institution, 
We have a variety of difficult issues, different issues. Our financial viability is something that we need to focus on. So it would be a tragedy if the National Water Supply and Drainage Board's financial viability is to be a perennial question while we remain a monopoly. So we need to do a variety of reforms in order to make ourselves an institution which would be which would be of great service to the nation. Let's take a look at stocks after this short break. Welcome back. Trading at the Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a mixed note today. The old share price index gained 5.54 points to close at 6,451.51 and the S&P SL20 dropped by 1.57 points to close at 3,624.99. The turnover was 1.3 billion rupees and 19.6 million shares were traded. Up next is Forex Trades. With that, we are wrapping up State of Business for the day. We'll meet you tomorrow at the same time with more latest news. Until then, take care. Good night.